Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you because we're here today and we know that the study today will contribute to our lives' progress in Jesus' name. Father, we're asking that as we study week by week from these pages of Scripture, you'll make us to be the people we ought to be in Jesus' name. We're asking that you'll open up our understanding, open up our spirit, and the spirit of the living God will apply that part of truth to our hearts that will make us victorious day by day in Jesus' name. We have the conviction that you have called us one by one in whichever places you have placed us, just like you called the Apostle Paul. And we've been watching this Apostle Paul from place to place in his journey and in his pilgrimage we know that he depended so much upon you and he was successful in the things that you called him to do we're studying all these things so that we too by your grace and power will be successful in what you have called us to do and we pray that the victory Jesus Christ won on the cross for us will be ours personally in Jesus name Teach us today again. Touch us in our spirits. Lead us by your own spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. We're now in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. And today we're looking into verses 12 to 28. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Verses 12 through to 28. And to appeal to you that today in particular and every time you come to the church to listen to the word of God. I want you to know that the Lord will be speaking to you. And it may be a particular sentence, a particular word. A particular verse from a corner, so to say, of the Bible, a place you never dreamt of, will provide a solution to your problem or to your life's goal, or will just open up a new insight in your life as the morning flowers open to the rays of the sun. A place you never suspected, it might be that place the Lord is reserving your blessing for you. That's why. It's so important when you come on an evening like this because of your own desire to achieve what the Lord wants in your life. You should never allow anything to distract you, anything to disturb you because your life is precious to God. And the achievement of God-ordained goal for your life is so important. So please listen to everything and live in the victory that Christ has purchased for you. We have been studying the life of the Apostle Paul and the ministry of the Apostle Paul. And today we are going to see three definite things in his life and ministry. One, the church against the Apostle. Two, the commitment of the Apostle. And three, the contact with Apollos. Paul had been in Corinth, and in Corinth the Lord had made him to meet people of like precious faith, Aquila and Priscilla. By the coming together of Paul the Apostle with these new friends who became committed, loyal, faithful in his own life, the Lord was comforting him because he had lately been going through some real trouble. His faith was on fire. On the fire of the Holy Ghost on the one hand, on the fire of challenge and criticism on the other hand. And um, if we look at our lives, we may discover that our faith is always on fire. On the one hand, there is the fire of the Holy Ghost, willing to burn and willing to fan the fire in our lives, in our fiber within us into a flame. On the other hand, there is a fire of criticism, the fire of 
condemnation from the enemies, the fire of opposition and persecution. And if we're not careful, the fire of criticism could just blow out, completely put off the other type of fire in our lives. And at such a time, he needed comfort. He needed companionship. And God brought the new friends into his life, Aquila and Priscilla. Then his old friends also came to join him at Corinth. And um, old friends are better than new friends most of the time. And if you could have both together, the old and the new, spirit fields, directed by the Lord, very faithful to and loving, that will be wonderful. And so the old and the new came into his life. Not only that, the Lord himself began to comfort him. And the Lord told him, Paul, be of good cheer. Do not allow anything to put you down because I have much people in this place. Be not afraid therefore, but speak. Hold not thy peace. And then God said, for I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. We're told from that encouragement, from that comfort, he remained in that city of Corinth for a year and six months. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. Before Paul eventually left Corinth, he had trained and equipped disciples who could minister to the Corinthian church and lead in the church at Corinth. These ministers and workers were trained, they were equipped, but then, according to the epistle to the Corinthians, we are told, they were still babes, babes in the law. And yet, Paul the Apostle committed the work into the hands, into the hands of these babes, into the hands of these people that he had raised up. Remember that I told you last week that evangelism or soul winning or the evangelization of a community must be done in the Bible way. Paul the Apostle did not just preach in that place and then leave the city immediately. He made sure that he committed the work into the hands of some people. These people were not all together perfect, they were not all together matured, they were not all together completely knowledgeable, but they had some good qualities. Number one, they had been converted through the ministry of the Apostle Paul. He had confidence in them, they had confidence in him. He had personally baptized one or two of them in water, and then he had seen to the baptism of the rest of them by his assistants and co-workers, co-laborers. And he had sat with them, training them and teaching them and equipping them, making them to understand about church, about the administration, about the doctrine, about the things they'll need to learn, and how they continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Then he established a link between himself and themselves. He knew that these workers and leaders that he put over the church in Corinth, even after staying there for one and a half years, he knew that they did not know everything they will eventually need to know. And therefore, there was an open communication between them and him. And we find in the epistle to the Corinthians that they were all the time writing to him. If there was anything they were not sure of, sure of about the worship of the Almighty God, about the doctrine of the Bible, about the mystery of the kingdom, he will uh, receive letters from them as to what should they do, what should they teach, what an instruction for us as a church, that when we go out to evangelize in a new community, before we leave that place, we must make sure that there are people that will be able to follow up on those people. 
And it shouldn't be people that are just telling us who have been Christians, who have been preachers. They should be people that we ourselves have been involved in their training, in their maturing, in their equipping. And even though they are not perfect yet, we should be able to commit the work into their hands. Let's look into 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. From verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but at, as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear age, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for, as, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? Now here we can see that they were not already perfect. Not completely full grown, not completely matured. Yet somebody must carry on the work of edifying that church. Building up that church carrying on the work of the Lord in that church. But whenever they had questions on their minds, they couldn't get answers to, they would write unto Paul the Apostle. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, concerning the things, in the plural, they were carrying on the work of the church, but then even though the Apostle Paul had spent one and a half years with them. They knew there were things they needed to take decisions on. They didn't understand what they will do. They didn't understand how they will go about the world. And they wrote to the Apostle Paul, concerning the things in the plural, whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge perfect all, but charity edifieth. Now, they wrote about marriage. They wanted some questions cleared. They also wrote about things offered to idols. They wanted some questions cleared. They had some knowledge, but that they needed love, charity, charity, love of God, love of the Word of God, and love for the church of the living God, as well as love for sinners. That is the thing that really edifies. And then he continues to give them instruction concerning that question they have asked, saying, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet, as he ought to know. He was telling them that there might be some members of the church that will say, Well, the Apostle Paul has committed the work of the church into our hands. We already know everything. Why bother that man? Why write to him again? He said, All those people should keep quiet. Because if any of those people at Corinth would ever think that they know anything, let him remember that he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. And there is none other God but one. And then he continues to give them instruction. In verse 13, Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. He gave them principles to go by. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, they were also asking about the gifts of the Spirit. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
from verse 12 now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead he also needed to straighten them out to point out the way to them concerning the resurrection of the dead now the thing we're saying is that as a great evangelist as an apostle as a teacher and a pastor and a prophet as well he knew that just evangelizing and leaving that site of evangelism and telling all that community to just do the follow-up he knew it does not work it never has worked it doesn't work and so he himself made sure that he committed the work into the hands of babes even though they were babes but he had taught them then he also gave them the chance that whenever they needed any instruction concerning any matter in the church any matter in their lives they should write to him and they did and he wrote back to them and uh, also he sent other people to visit them and he himself also he took responsibility over that church the growth of that church the maturity of that church the development of that church the rest of the chapter in Acts chapter 18 presents to us both problems and progress both conflict and courage both the evangelization of the sinning community and the edification of the saintly community for the purpose of study as i've told you we are breaking the passage into three parts the charge against the apostle commitment of the apostle and then contact with apollos let's read from acts of the apostles chapter 18 from verse 12 and when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat saying this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law and when Paul was now about to open his mouth Gallio said unto the Jews if it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness O ye Jews reason would that I should bear with you but if it be a question of words and names and of your law look ye to it for I will be no judge of such matters and it drove them from the judgment seat then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat, and Gallio cared for none of those things. Paul the Apostle was a man that suffered like no man. What a great instruction that is given to us in your life looking at your life since you were born though you have not been an apostle though you have not been a great well-known evangelist though you have not been a great pastor of a great church maybe you will be you're on your way but you are not yet now maybe you are not a great uh, teacher a great prophet but looking at your life you have suffered so much perhaps and the devil will be telling you that there is no way your life will fulfill the goal God had in mind if you are suffering like this. And then he will tell you step by step from the time you even knew the Lord, from the time you started reading the Bible seriously, from the time you were born again, how you have suffered among your own people, how you have suffered among so-called children of God, how you have suffered in your community among the co-tenants, how you have suffered among co-workers. They have slandered you. They have criticized you they have put they have brought false accusations against you and the devil will be telling you there is no way you will ever make it but listen to me the apostle that suffered the greatest of all the apostles of those days was paul the apostle and the one that reached the goal of his life faster than anybody else the one that achieved the goal of his life quicker than anyone else the one that did much for the kingdom of god 
better than anyone else. The one that if we had another name to use and we could just classify all the others as apostles and then classify him as a separate person with a separate title would have done it was Paul the Apostle. Great suffering, great achievement. Great suffering, great accomplishment. You don't ever think that the devil has any power to be able to militate against you, to be able to bring all his agents against you, to destroy the purpose of God for your life. Whatever God has in his book in heaven, as for your life's goal, your life's purpose, will be fulfilled whether the devil likes it or not. Look at this man. From the time he was converted in Damascus, they wanted to kill him. He had to come out through the wall with a basket. He came into other places and they were looking for his lives. The Jews, the heathen, the so-called Christians, the false brethren, everywhere they slandered him. They criticized him. They put him down. They wanted to just destroy him. And looking at his life and at the things he said he suffered, he said, I was beaten by the Jews. I was stoned by the Jews. I had shipwreck. I was almost drowned a lot of times. He said, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, fierce within, fighting without. I fought against the lions and the wild animals in Ephesus. The heathens were against me. Among the barbarians, they were looking for my life. Among the Jews, they were looking for my life. He was in prison, he was in court, he was in the city, he was in the synagogue, he was in the temple, he was everywhere. Name any city, he had at least ten enemies in that city. And that man was a person that did the greatest among all the apostles. How do you ever think that the devil can bury you, forget you? How do you ever think that with all the opposition, with all the criticism, with all the slandering, with all the things that the devil may try to do against you, against your life, that the devil therefore will succeed to cancel the purpose of God for your life? It is impossible. It has never been done. It will never be done. If God has interest in a man, the heathens or the Greeks or the Jews or the synagogue or the government or anyone will not be able to destroy the purpose of God in the life of that man. And I know God has a purpose for your life. A man, a woman, in the villages, they are after you. In the city, they are after you. In the place of work, they are after you. Some so-called Christians are after you. They slander you. They criticize you. They condemn you. Never, never, never mind. All those things can never destroy the purpose of God for your life. Upon this rock I build my church. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail against that church. And if you are built on the rock, the devil cannot destroy you. The opposers will not be able to destroy you. And Paul the apostle, he knew that. That's why he never thought about it. It was not a serious problem. Uh, one, one time it was a serious problem to him. And he went to God and he said, God, this is too much. The fire is burning too much. The messenger of the devil is buffeting me, buffeting me, buffeting me. Take it away from me so that I'll be able to achieve my goal. God smiled from heaven, looked at his record, and he saw the timetable of God, the timetable of heaven for the life of Paul the Apostle. And he smiled and said, Paul, you are doing well. Go back to the job. My grace is sufficient for you. Because my strength is made perfect in weakness. And therefore Paul came out of his chamber praying. And he raised up his two hands and he said, I will glory in my infirmities. I will glory in tribulation. I will glory in all these oppositions and persecutions. Because when I am weak, then I am strong. And that God who made him strong when he was weak, that God who made him to achieve and accomplish the best for his life, even when the opposition was great and high, that same God is still alive. And that God will not allow you to sink in the river of trouble. That God will not allow you to die in defeat, will not allow you to die until your life's purpose is accomplished. It will be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one of these days, we'll be looking back like Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle, 
he called on young Timothy. You know, young Timothy was a fearful person. And that's why Paul was telling him, Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear, of timidity, but he has given us the spirit of a sound mind, the spirit of love. Therefore, Timothy, guard up your loins, put on the breastplate of righteousness, put on your helmet, and continue to walk, and nothing will destroy you. He said, Timothy, look at me now. You joined the team when we were coming to Lystra and Derby, and you know the trouble I got in Philippi, you know the trouble I got in Corinth, you know the trouble I got in all those places. But Timothy, you know my life, you've seen me, you've seen the trouble. But look back now, I have finished the course, I have run the race. Look up, a crown of righteousness is awaiting me there. Nothing has disturbed the plan of God at all. The Corinthians, the Ephesians, the Jews, the Greeks, the shipwreck, the beating, the stoning, the enemies, all those oppositions and criticisms, they have not removed one percent of the purpose and the plan of God for my life. It, it never can happen. It never can happen. That opposition coming from agents of Satan can remove a single item of the purpose of God for your life. All things work together for good. For them that are called according to his purpose. For them that love God. Called according to his purpose. And I know you love God. That's why you are coming week after week. I know you are called according to his purpose. That's why there's something in your heart saying, Lord, I want to love you more. I want to serve you more. And a person like you, studying the Bible, reading the Bible, praying to the Lord, even when you have made your mistakes, even when you have done something wrong, your heart is crying after God, saying, oh God, help me. I want to do better. You have the right attitude. You are called according to God's purpose. Nothing will destroy you. Nothing will stop the purpose of God for your life. And, and you see, the Apostle Paul, he was slandered. Hey, let's learn something from this. While he was slandered, while he was criticized, while he was brought to the judgment seat before Galileo, he even wanted to open his mouth to defend himself at this time. Galileo did not allow him to talk. Galileo just told the people, if it be a matter of your religion, of names and titles, go and look into that. That's not my concern. If it's a matter of wickedness, if it's a matter of a, a crime, I look into it. But if it's just a matter of um, your Judaism, go and settle it. And he left his side. While they were leaving his side, they took Sostenes, a friend of Paul the Apostle. They took him and they beat him. Galileo did not look in their direction. Galileo just walked away. Now there are people of God who have been slandered in the past. In fact, Jesus Christ said, if you are persecuted, don't care for it. If you are persecuted, don't be sad because of it. Rejoice because your reward is great in heaven. Because so, persecuted they the prophets that were before you. I want to remind you of other people that went before us. My brother, my sister, the moment you start doing something significant for the Lord, if the devil was asleep before, he will wake up. If the devil didn't know your name before, he will try to slander your name. The moment you begin to do something good for the kingdom of God in the house fellowship, in your area, as a sooner leader, as a preacher of the gospel, the moment you begin to make up your mind, this single life is only one. And before this life is ended, I'm going to do something significant for the Lord. If the devil didn't see you before, he'll begin to take notice. And of course, he will want to run you down. But never mind never mind he has never defeated any chosen child of god anointed appointed selected by god to go and do something whether in egypt or in syria or in nineveh or it's in jerusalem or it's in damascus or antioch or corinth the devil has not been able to destroy any real child of God called and selected to do something significant for the Lord. Jesus Christ sending a message to one of the churches in Revelation. He said, I know your works. I know where you live. 
right at the place where Satan has his headquarters, where the seat of Satan is. But I'll make all those false apostles, I'll make them to come and bow down before you because I have called you, I have sent you. And it doesn't matter where you live, even if Satan has a shrine, a temple, even if Satan has a seat in that place, you will be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. And at the end of life, you will look back. At the end of life, you will know that God is no respecter of persons. That the way he handled the life of Paul the Apostle, the life he took, the way he took care of him, it is the same way the God of heaven has decided he will take care of you. Don't think that uh, when there is opposition or slander, you hear your name over there in bad, uh, bad news. You hear your name over there, bad news. You hear your name over there, bad news. Don't think, oh, heaven has forgotten me because of that. No, sir. No, sir. Heaven never forgot the weakest of the saints of God. The youngest of the children of God. The most inexperienced of the believers. Heaven never forgot that there is somebody inside there that needs protection. That needs the fulfillment of life's goal. Heaven will never forget you. The heat may be high. The slander may be spreading. Criticism may be acidic. Biting. Bitter. But you will come out of it. You will be victorious. And at last we'll be able to say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. None of these things move me. Because there is a God in heaven. A God on his throne. And he is for me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. He anointeth my head, my cup runneth over. He spreads the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Yea, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life those people can't kill you those people can destroy you those landers will not do anything at anything about your life at all you'll come out in the end more than a conqueror amen, amen. in Nehemiah chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 1 Nehemiah chapter 6 from verse 1. Now it came to pass when Chambalat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates that Chambalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after they sought, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Chambalat, his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand, where it was written, It is reported among the heathen, this is a slander, false accusation. It is reported among the heathen. And Gashmo says it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, 
there is a king in Judah. Now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now therefore, let us take counsel together. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the world, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. O God, strengthen my hands. O God, strengthen my hands. You are doing a good job in your family. You are doing a good job in the house fellowship. You are doing a good job in the church. You are doing a good job as a zonal leader, a coordinator, a sectional leader in the church. And uh, people just slander you. Just slander you. Well... You know what the devil wants? He knows you have a goal. God has a goal and achievement in your life. And he just wants to make sure that that thing is not done. Oh God, strengthen my hands. Don't fight. Oh God, strengthen my hands. When it appears you are weak, when it appears you are confused, when it appears that will the devil take an upper hand, oh God, strengthen my hands. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehatabel, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee, yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said, Should such a man as I flee. Think about it. Are you running away? Because of the fire, because of the heat, because of the slander, because of the criticism, because of the opposition, because of the persecution. Think about it. Should such a one as you run away? With the blood of Jesus Christ upon you, with the promises of God that are yea and amen upon your life. With the thousands and myriads of angels all surrounding you as the hills surround Jerusalem. With the blood of Jesus saying, when I see that blood, I will pass over you. With heaven all surrounding you saying, the weakest of the saints of God can never be defeated. The weakest of the saints of God can never be downtrodden. Will such a one as you run away? Such a one as you that God is preparing to be a teacher of the word of God, a prophet of the word, a prophet of God, a, 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 perhaps a pastor of a great church, an evangelist, an apostle, if you please. A person like you that God himself is saying, I know the thoughts I have towards that man, towards that woman. Thoughts of good deeds and thoughts of well-being to give him an expected end. A person that even the whole of heaven, the angels are looking at your life saying, ah, ah, how, how can God have a beautiful, beautiful plan for a human being like this? You don't know because you have not seen the vision. You don't know because you have not had the dream. But God, in the courts of heaven, is surprising all those angels what God will do to a man that is fully surrendered unto him. Is it such a one as yourself that will flee, run for the devil? When you know in a short time the word of your mouth will be the decree of a king. And thou shalt decree thing and shall come to pass. What are you running to? What, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with you when the angels are all surrounding you? The blood of Jesus around you. The promises of God here and amen for you. What's the matter with you? Should such a one as you flee, run away? Is concerning you in Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you're already under the shadow, where are you running to? What's your problem? What's out there that will bring protection unto you? But he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee. <laughs> Did you hear that? Hey, there is nothing that will, de de that will uh, destroy you. 
there is nothing that will destroy you because it says surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler from the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at the right hand but it shall not come near thee only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on their feet because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him I will honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation should such a man as that flee no the Lord is on your side there is no problem rise up and let us pray there's nothing for you to fear forget the slander forget the criticism forget the opposition forget the persecution your Lord is reigning your Lord is reigning the King of heaven the God of heaven the Almighty the ancient of days our King reigneth oh yes he reigns Oh yes, he reigns. He reigns in heaven. He reigns in heaven. He reigns in heaven. 